In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a problem on initial rate method so that you can determine the order of a reaction and the individual orders of the reactants that are present in them. Here is a reaction. The reaction is between nitric oxide and hydrogen to produce nitrogen and water. What is the rate law for the reaction? And calculate the rate constant. These are the two things you have to do based on the experimental data that has been collected. And this data table kind of gives you the information that you need for determining the rate law or the order of the reaction. You will find that the first column represents run number. Uh, it tells you how many times the experiment has been repeated. The remaining columns, two columns, represent the concentrations of the reactants that have been used. And the last column gives you what we call the initial rate or rate of the reaction for the given concentrations. Now using this information, we are going to solve and determine the order of each reactant, in this case nitric oxide and hydrogen. Now in order to determine the value of K or the rate constant, we need to be able to write the rate law. And in order to write the rate law, we need the order of each of the reactants. So now we are going to write the rate law in a generic form. Rate is equals to K. K represents the specific reaction rate or the rate constant into concentration of nitric oxide raised to X, where X represents the order of nitric oxide, and hydrogen raised to Y, where Y represents the order of hydrogen. So this is a generic rate law. We need to solve so that we get the value of x and y based on the experiment that has been conducted. The overall order of the reaction n can be calculated by adding the value of x and y. And that is the intent of the, react of the problem. We need to determine the value of k. And in order to do that, we need to be able to write a rate law. And in order to write a rate law, we need the value of x and y. So anytime you get a problem based on initial rate method, if you have to determine the value of K, the implied meaning is you should be able to determine the order of each of the reactants and write a rate law. So everything relating to that should be calculated. So the first thing we are going to do is determine the order of nitric oxide. And to do that, I am going to select two experiments, the first and the second in the data that was provided. And using that information, I'm going to calculate the order of nitric oxide. Now, before doing that, let's look at the numbers that we have here. In experiment number one or run number one, you find that nitric oxide, the concentration is 0 0.420 moles per liter. The concentration of hydrogen is 0.122. And the last column represents the rate of the reaction or the initial rate and it's given as 0 0.1360. In the second part of the experiment or the second trial, you'll find that the concentration of nitric oxide is 0 0.210 whereas the concentration of hydrogen is again the same 0 0.122. Now, this is going to tell you something. If the concentration of hydrogen is not changing, is the same in both experiments, and only the concentration of nitric oxide is changing, then if there is a change in the rate of the reaction, obviously that's been caused by the change in concentration of nitric oxide. That's the implied meaning. And we can also determine the order of only a single reactant this time. So what we're trying to do is eliminate the effect of hydrogen on the rate of reaction by keeping its concentration constant. Now let's look at the numbers more closely. 
Experiment 2 has a molar concentration of 0 0.210 for nitric oxide. And in experiment 1, the concentration is twice the value, 0 0.420. So we are doubling the concentration of nitric oxide. So if you double the concentration of nitric oxide, what happens to the rate of the reaction? We find that there is a change. The value changes from 0 0.0339 to 0 0.1360. So there is an increase and we want to find what the increase is. In order to do that, all we need to do is take the ratio of the, the two reactions or two experiments that we have performed. And to simplify it and to have structure, this is what we do. We are going to take the ratio of the rate of reaction for the first experiment to the rate of reaction for the second experiment. I did choose one and two or in the numerator I'm going to use 1 because the concentration of nitric oxide is larger in first experiment and in the second experiment is half the value. And you would also notice that the rate of reaction is proportionately larger for the first reaction and smaller for the second reaction. So it becomes easy when you're taking the ratio because you're going to get whole numbers. It really doesn't matter whether you're going to use 2 over 1 or 1 over 2. So once you write this reaction or the rate law for this reaction, the next thing you would do is substitute the numbers. So if you are to substitute the numbers, this is what you will get. I have not included units here, just, that's just to save the space on the slide. But you are expected to write the correct units so that they will cancel out when we are done with the calculation. So here you have substituted the numbers. Rate 1, the value is 0 0.1360. Rate 2, the value is 0 0.0339. And the unit is moles per liter per second. Concentration of nitric oxide in the first experiment is 0 0.420. Second experiment is 0 0.210. And the concentration of hydrogen is the same in both cases. So typically, this is what we need to write where X represents the order of nitric oxide. Now, if you solve these numbers, this is what you're going to get. 0 0.1360 divided by 0 0.0339 should give you 4. And 0 0.420 divided by 0.210 is 2. Or you can say 4 is equal to 2 raised to X. Or typically, 2 squared is equal to 2 raised to X, or X is equal to 2. You can see it in this case. But if that's not the case all the time, you may also solve it using uh, your logarithmic functions. This is a simple, simplified version of the calculation, if you can see the relationship between the numbers. Uh, those of you who are com comfortable with do doing this, you can get your answer right away. If not, if you take the logarithm of 4, which is equal to x log 2, and solve for x, log 4 by log 2 is going to be 2. So the order of nitric oxide is 2. Once you're done determining the order of nitric oxide, you would look through the four sets of values and choose any two values where the concentration of nitric oxide remains the same, but the concentration of hydrogen changes. So that would mean that you want to study the effect of changing concentration of hydrogen on the rate of reaction. In order to do that, this is what we are going to do. I'm going to pick experiments 2 and 3, or run 2 and 3. Look at the concentration of nitric oxide. It's 0 0.210 and 0 0.210. It's the same. So that's not going to affect the rate of reaction. Whereas the concentration of hydrogen has changed from 0.122 in the second run to 0.244 in the third run, which means I've doubled the concentration. And I notice that there is a change in the rate of reaction because the values are changing from 0 0.0339 to 0 0.0678. Applying the rules that we applied earlier in the previous slide, uh, to have structure, we will go like this. We will take the ratio of rate 3 over rate 2. We have written the rate law using x and y. Substitute the numbers. You would notice the concentration of nitric oxide is the same. So this number typically reduces to 0 0.0678 by 0 0.0339, that is the ratio of the rates, is equal to 0 0.244 by 0 0.210 raised to y. y is the order of hydrogen, which means 
2 is equal to 2 raised to y or y is equal to 1 or 2 raised to 1 is equal to 2 raised to y. Or use logarithms to solve it. Log 2 is equal to, it should be y log 2. And the value of y should be equal to 1. Or the order of hydrogen is equal to 1. In conclusion, we can write the rate law like this. Rate is equal to k in the concentration of NO raised to 2 and H2 raised to 1. The overall order of the reaction is N is equal to 2 plus 1 or X plus Y, which is 3. Now, using this information, you can calculate the value of rate constant. In order to calculate the value of rate constant, you need the concentration of nitric oxide and hydrogen, which means you can pick any one of the four sets of values that you have. And I'm going to pick value number 4 to determine the value of K. So, I rearrange the rate law expression and solve for K. K is equal to rate divided by concentration of NO raised to 2 into concentration of hydrogen raised to 1. And now I'm going to substitute the numbers for K, which is 0 0.0339 moles per liter per second divided by point 105 moles per liter the whole to the power of 2 times 0.448 moles per liter raised to 1. On solving it, the value of K is found to be 6.3 liters per moles per second, which is the same as a unit of a third order reaction. So that's how you solve an initial rate method problem and determine the value of K by obtaining the rate law for which you determine the independent orders of the reactants by using the ratios of the different experiments that have been given to you. That's it for now.